Alive on the inside. Step right up, people. There we go. It's new. It's different. It's all alive. See the fabulous little Egypt. Who once stands for the Queen of England. Little Egypt, the shimmy dancer. Now, in all confidence, folks, for those of you who've never seen the female figure in delicious movement from head to toe, you can see it here for only 25 cents, one quarter of a dollar. Two-bit piece. Do see the most neat. Like Oh, ain't this the meatless dead gum thing you ever seen? Virginia City's really come of age now that the carnival circuit has hit it. Oh, I can't stand to look at him. Suppose we were to miss. Oh, you miss? Well, you don't look very scared, Jennifer. What's there to be scared of? Huh? I'd give anything in the world to change places with that girl up there. I promise you, you won't get her in your eye or a finger in your eye. Well, Adam, I guess you and I had better get on our way. We've been here longer than we planned. Harriet, Jennifer, good night. Joe, you promised Mr. Beale faithfully you'd get the girls home by 10 o'clock tonight. Right. Mr. Cartwright, please. Do you have to remind me? Don't worry, Pa. Keep an eye on him. Good. I'm sure, Pa, but who's going to keep an eye on him? Two bits, 25 cents, a quarter of a dollar. Horse will. The most delectable package of all. Isn't that right, Horse? Have a public display. I mean, sir. He'll do fine, Pa. Ask no more. You're going to see this charming little lady move every muscle in her body. That burn thing you ever seen, Joe? Well, you're just not kidding. Looking at anything special, Gurner? That girl, the redhead. She looks familiar. Hey, you reckon what we ought to take in first? Hey, how about the mystic tent? I'd like to have my fortune told. All right. That's what I'd like to hear about. Wouldn't you, Harriet? Well, not if it's any Come bad on, news, I wouldn't. She's been plastered all over the front pages of the San Francisco paper for the past couple of months. That's Joshua Beale's daughter. Joshua Beale? The Silver King. He's one of the richest men in the world. <laughs> Stop dreaming, Gurner. Before the big show begins, the most electrifying tent act ever to appear on the midway west of the Mississippi. Just once in my life, I'd like to get my hands in some real money. What do you suppose Beale figures that daughter's worth to? More money than we'll ever see, Gurner. this guy read your future? I don't know. I might just take him on. Ever since that old Paiute squaw read my palm and told me I was going to be taking that long trip, I, I've been plumb off my feet bag. I can't eat but five or six meals. <laughs> hey! <laughs> now, if one of you will give to my assistant some personal object. Don't be afraid, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing will happen to it. If you please, some personal object. Are you ready, Mr. Wizard? I am ready. Then can you tell me what I'm holding in my hand? I see a round object of precious metal. I hear a strange sound, a very strange sound. I believe it is a gold pocket watch. Oh. Joe, how do you reckon he does that? Beats the heck out of me. You think it's some sort of trick? Well, of course it's a trick. How do you know? Well, I just... Silence. 
And now, I will bring to you one of the most astounding disappearance acts in the annals of all magic. And tonight, just to prove to you that this is truly an outstanding and remarkable feat, instead of using my regular assistant, I shall ask one of you to assist me. Oh. Is there a young lady in the audience who would like to disappear for a few minutes? I assure you, it's a thrill that you have never realized before. I'd like to try. Hey, yes, Jenny, sir. You know what your Paul said about leaving little Joe's sight? He didn't say anything about this. And besides, this will be fun. Yeah, but if, if you disappear, that's going to be leaving his sight, ain't it? Jennifer, sit down. Everybody's looking at you. Hey, Joe, don't you think you'll stop her? I'm going to let her go ahead. It's just a trick. It seems a shame to make such a pretty young lady disappear. Don't worry, young man. I'll have her back to you soon enough. Now, you see, ladies and gentlemen, that this is an ordinary wardrobe truck. Young lady. Stage. And I open it. Why is she always doing things like that? Like the time she ran off to San Francisco. I kind of like it. Show she's got a lot of spunk. The young lady will reappear when the mystic spirits are willing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, while that beautiful young lady is out there floating around in space, I offer you, for two bits, a quarter part of a dollar, this elixir of life. You know, young lady, since you were kind enough to join our act, I hope you'll be discreet enough to keep our secret. I'm Phil Reed, owner of the show. Oh, I won't tell. But I must say, I certainly expected much more than a back door in a trunk. Hmm. I guess our magic is pretty simple, huh? Is it? You know, this is the most fascinating place I've ever seen. I, uh, I think you better get back in the trunk. It won't take long before he sells all the snake oil. Even when you know the tricks. There's such a strange atmosphere. Such an air of excitement about it all. It's a living. Oh, I'm sure it's much more than that. Much more. I think you better get back to your friends, huh? Please, Mr. Reed. I can get away from my friends. Now, look, if you're not in that box when he opens it, the whole act is going to be ruined. Isn't there any way I can change your mind, Mr. Reed? Aren't you afraid of what could happen to you in a circus sideshow alone? Afraid? <laughs> Mr. Reed, I'm not afraid of anything. I'll bet you're not. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I think that the beautiful young lady who has been so far away from us may have returned. Far away. No, really. It's all the way behind that curtain over there. Well, Jennifer, aren't you going to tell us about it? Maybe. Someday. And that's only the beginning, folks. Only the beginning. I want to call your attention to one of the most sensational acts ever presented west of the Mississippi. In just a few moments, directly next door, we're going to present that 350-pound strongman, Hercules. Just follow me right this way. The greatest act of his kind ever presented on our midway. Right this way, you'll love it. It's the most sensational, outstanding act. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Hercules is going to bend this solid one-inch iron bar like it was made out of this sawdust on the floor. Hercules. How about that, folks? Would you like to uh, 
examine that bar, sir, to see that it's genuine? Thank you. You like to examine this, sir? Try that right in there, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I... What are you, smart aleck or something? Ladies and gentlemen, if there's anybody in the audience who doubts the genuine strength of Hercules or thinks that this is some form of trickery, Hercules is now ready to match his strength against any two men in the audience. And furthermore, we're prepared to offer 50 bucks, $50 to any man or woman who can force Hercules across this white line within the time limit of one minute. Do we have any takers, huh? What about you two stalwart young gentlemen down there, huh, with the two beautiful young ladies, huh? Us? Yeah, you two. Come on up, boys, and show the girls how strong you are. Go on, little Joe. You're not afraid to at least try, are you? Why, he's bigger than anything. Would you like to try your luck? Come on, Oz. I think we can take him. You on? Let's go. All right, gentlemen, the time limit is one minute, remember? To pull Hercules across this white line. Are you ready? Go! And now there, ladies and gentlemen, is the greatest advertisement in the world for our elixir of life. Would you believe it, folks, at one time, this poor boy was only a 74-pound weekly. But after 90 days and 90 nights, Hercules taking this elixir of life. Today, look at the results. 355 pounds of solid blubber or muscle. There he is, folks, Hercules. One time, a 74-pound weekly. The winner, Hercules is the winner now. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. <laughs> thank you. Let's keep moving it along, folks. Keep it moving along. Some wonderful shows out on the midway. See the sword swallower and the fire eater Joe, who swallows hot coals. Right Jennifer's out. gone. She's just the kid out of the tent. She's gone. Did you see her leave? I was watching the stage. Why is she always doing things like this? Oh, it's probably just her idea of some kind of a joke. We gotta find her. Oh, we're gonna find her. And when we find her, I'm going to hog tire for the rest of the evening. Come on. Come on, let's go. Let's find out where she could be. You didn't do so good tonight out there, Della. Don't start an argument with me, Phil. Not tonight. I'm tired. I'm talking about the good of the show. Those rubes pay their money to see you give a performance. How long do I have to keep on doing this? You told me a year ago we could get married, I could get out of the act and help you run the show. Next time you go on, you give them their money's worth. Another argument? Oh, no, not really. Just that I know him so well. He saw a pretty young girl out in the audience tonight, captured his fancy. He looks at her, wanting her, and... then he looks at me. Why don't you let me be the mystic in the show, huh? I'll tell you what we'll do. As soon as Hercules finishes his act, the three of us will go out and have a cup of coffee together. I'll tell you a fortune. Mr. Reed, I was looking for you. Well, I can't say I'm not flattered. Well, what are you doing wandering around out here alone? What do you propose to do about it? Send me back again? Is there any reason why I shouldn't? Just one, Mr. Reed. It wouldn't do any good. How does your father put up with you? Oh, father. He just doesn't understand me. He doesn't realize I'm not as conservative as young ladies of his day. Why don't we go someplace where we can talk? I was hoping you'd say that. My wagon's right here. Let's go. Someday I'll kill him for what he does to her. Poor Hercules. Do you think that will make her love him? I had no idea Sideshow Wagon would be like this. Well, not all of them are. 
But there has to be some compensation for running the show. Mm. I'm sure there must be. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, let's say, uh, compensation such as, uh, entertaining young ladies in your private quarters. Isn't that right, Mr. Reed? <laughs> You're a very attractive young lady. Thank you. And you're a very handsome man. Now, Mr. Reed, I... I thought we came in here to talk. Can't you knock? I can if I want to. Hello, Miss Beale. I didn't tell you my name. Oh, I know your name. I know your father's name, too. Joshua Beale. The richest man on the Comstock. How much do you suppose you're worth to that father of yours, Miss Beale? Are you out of your mind, Gurner? I, Mr. Reed, or you, if you miss this chance. We can break camp tonight. By tomorrow morning, we can be over the mountain and well on our way to Placerville. All you have to do is write a note to Joshua Beale. One million dollars. That's all it'll cost him to get his pretty little girl back home. You'll never get away with it. With your help, I can, Reed. Listen, Reed, one million dollars. You know what that could mean? You always wanted to make some big money. No. Shut up! Don't scream, lady. This is a sharp knife. Where do you think you'd hide her? I thought you'd figure out a way. You ought to hold her like I'm doing. You don't know how good it feels to hold a million dollars. We're gonna have to tie her up, Phil. Get the rope. It's right behind you. Come on, Phil. seen a little red-headed girl about so high, have you? Why don't you look inside, buddy? Get a ticket right over there. <laughs> right this way, folks. Follow me. Right next to the so <laughs> he ain't no use in asking him. He's got a gullet full of sword in him. Yeah, he wouldn't tell you anything anyway. These carny people stick together tighter than those bartenders in San Francisco the time they tried to Shanghai our pump. How do we know she's even here at all? Well, where else would she be? Salt Lake or St. Louis, for all we know. Boss, I think we can cover more ground if we split up. Why don't you and Harriet look out here? I'll check behind those tents. All right, you be careful, you hear? Right. Dad, knowing if he don't get mixed up with some of the dangerous women I ever saw. Now, you be careful what you say, Hoss. Jennifer's my best friend. Now listen, if you're staying close to her, why don't you tell her to be real friendly and come on back here? Yes, what is it? Oh, I saw your wagon. I was just trying to find out who's in charge of the show. I am. Why, do you have a complaint? <laughs> no, no complaints. See, I came here with a girl tonight. Now she's disappeared. I just wondered if you might have seen her. Sonny, I see an awful lot of people, and happily all paying customers. Yeah, well, about this girl. Her name's Jennifer, Jennifer Beale. She's 18, she has light red hair, brown eyes. Well, from your description, I can understand why you feel badly about losing her. But you know what they say. They don't always go home with the fellas that brought them. Sorry, I can't help you.
May I come in? My name is Joe Cartwright. I just wondered if... Uh... You're a little young for this sort of thing, aren't you, Joe Cartwright? Oh, look, you don't understand. You see, I didn't come here to, uh... Well, what I mean is... Exactly what do you mean, Joe? Well, I'm sorry I barged in on you like this, Miss Little Egypt. Call me Della. Uh, thanks, Della. Say, I brought my girl to the show tonight. Yes, I remember seeing her. She's very pretty. No, well, she's disappeared. I've been all over the carnival asking questions. Nobody seems to want to give me any answers. That's why when I saw your light, I... Sure. It hurts to lose someone, doesn't it? Oh, well, it's not quite as painful as all that. It's just that I am supposed to make sure she's all right. I don't think she's run off with another fella. All right, tell me about her. Who is she? Her name's Jennifer Beale. Well, is there anything special about her? Or some reason someone might want to harm her? Yeah, there's one big one. Her father's one of the richest men on the comp staff. Yes, that is a reason. You stay here, Joe. I'll go ask some questions. Maybe I can find your girl for you. Thanks, Della. What you doing here, boy? You looking for something to steal? Now, wait a minute, mister. I'm no thief. Well, I think you are. I think we better teach you a lesson. Now, look. Wait a minute, fellas. We can talk. <coughs> Good job, boys. Very good. That'll teach them from Stupid Wait a minute. Is this his gun? That's right. Go ahead. Hello, Adela. How'd you do? Oh, pretty well. How did you do? What's that supposed to mean? Nothing on your mind? Well, a young man just paid me a visit in my tent, and uh, it seems he lost his girlfriend. <laughs> well, what's that got to do with me? Well, it just sounded familiar, that's all. Oh, honey. I thought we weren't going to have any more of those suspicions. I saw you talking to a girl earlier, Phil, and I saw you bring her in here. Mm -hmm. And if you'd hung around a few minutes, you would have seen her leave. <laughs> oh, she was a child. An innocent kid looking for adventure. I got rid of her fast. You are telling me the truth, aren't you, Phil? You're not lying to me. Oh, Della, there's nobody else but you. Can't you believe that? Sure. I can believe it. Well, then let's forget about the girl. I saw the kid who visited you in your tent. I told him maybe his girl saw a boy she liked better and went home with him. I guess that's what she did. Sure. Now, come on, you're tired. Get a little rest because we're pulling out tonight. Tonight? Hmm? Why tonight? I thought we were going to play this stand for the rest of the week. We were. But I changed my mind. See you later. You have got the girl, haven't you, Phil? Are we going to start that all over oh, again? Stop lying to me. I know who she is and, and what you're trying to do. All right, so you know. Tell her this is the biggest thing that ever happened to us. Do you think you can kidnap Joshua Beale's daughter and get away with it? She fell into our laps. I didn't invite her in here. She walked in. She's worth a million dollars to us. Do you know the kind of life we can have with a million dollars? Oh, Phil. I love you. I guess I always will. But I'd rather see you dead than mixed up in something like this. Della, we're not going to harm the girl. When Joshua Beale pays off, we'll turn her loose. How can you stand there and say you're going to turn her loose? Don't you know she'll remember you? If you go through with this, you can't turn her loose. Who said anything about turning her loose? Does she know what the girl is? No. You shouldn't have told Della about the girl, Phil. I didn't tell her. She figured it out. Well, that's too bad. Yes, that's very bad, isn't it, Phil? All right, it's too bad. I don't know where else we can look. 
We done covered every inch of this carnival. Twice. Yeah. I think I might as well be getting you on home, Harry. There ain't no use in your folks thinking you disappeared, too. Wonder what happened to little Joe. Us? Hey, Joe. What happened? What's the matter, boy? The four guys just piled hemp in there. I'll be all right, don't worry. What happened to your gun? Yeah, they must have taken it after they beat me up. Well, you know, there's something real wrong around here, Hoss. I got dumped because I was asking questions about Jennifer. You mean that this is just one of her jokes? You think something's happened to her? Hey, listen. Hoss, you take Harry at home. On the way, stop by. Tell Sheriff Brady to get over here. The car as quick as he can. What are you going to be doing in the meantime? Well, the only thing I can do, keep on looking. Oh, Joe, you, you got to find her. Yeah, Harry, I know. I'll bring the sheriff myself. Be back in a minute. Come on. All right. Joe, what happened to you? Where were you? Oh, honey, that's a fine question for you to ask me. I've had your four friends work me over. Work you over? <laughs> Joe, I didn't. I've got to talk to you. It's about Jennifer. All right, you said you knew something about Jennifer. Please believe me, Joe. I'm trying to help you find your girl. She's somewhere here in the carnival. Oh, we're going to find her, all right. I've already sent for the sheriff. Please, Joe, uh, let me do this my way. Don't call in the sheriff. The carnival people are good friends of mine. They'll help. I've already seen the way they help. I'll take the sheriff. But if the sheriff comes, then a lot of innocent people will be hurt. People I love and that are good people that know nothing about this. Well, I'm sorry. I can't help that. Joe, let me... No! I gotta know. Well, first of all, I didn't do it. Second, they got Jennifer hit out around here someplace. You better forget about Jennifer. There's been a murder here. Yeah, I know. That girl was killed because she was trying to help me find Jennifer. You know anything about this, Reed? Well, boy, talk to me. I've questioned everybody in this show, and nobody knows anything about her. Is this your gun? Yes, it's my gun, but I didn't have it when this... I think you better come along with me. Look, I'm not gonna leave here till we find Jennifer. Son, I know Jennifer as well as you do. Maybe better. I had a posse out combing the hills for her that time she ran off to San Francisco. Joe, maybe you ought not to make any more trouble for yourself. Come along. Hey, look what's happening. Hey, he's gone this way. Hey, 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 hey. Cut. In here. I'm trying to help you. In here. I don't know what you're up to, mister, but thanks a lot. I'm not up to anything. I'm Rudin. I was Della Thompson's closest friend. I don't believe you killed her. Ma'am, are you sure you didn't see him come by here? I didn't see anything. I just sit here. I don't see nothing. <laughs> Sheriff, I know little Joe didn't kill that woman. But I'd a heap rather see him in your jail as running loose around here. Well, we're not going to learn anything here. Now, listen to me. There's only so many wagons and so many tents. So we'll search them one by one. Hoss? You take one party, I'll take the other. Right. It could be kidnapping. I'm sure Della thought so, too. She was just getting ready to tell me something when she was killed. I believe you, Joe. But I don't know what to do about it. What can you do? Well, we're a funny bunch here. In time, we get to believing our own act. Maybe I can do a little mind reading. In here.
There's no use searching for the girl in here, Hercules. I'm not looking for the girl. I'm looking for the man who killed Della. Do you think I'd protect anyone that harmed Della? I gotta find him. I gotta kill him with my bare hands. I always told Della I'd kill anybody that harmed her. I'm your friend, Hercules. Don't you trust me? All I know is Della is dead. I'm going out back. You stay here. I'm here. I told you there was no trick. I'll find him, and when I do, I'll kill him. I wish there was some way to convince him you were innocent. Yeah, so do I. Oh. He'd make a good ally. He's really a nice man. And he was in love with Della Thompson. Him? Yeah. Well, we're all freaks here. One way or another. Doesn't mean we don't have any heart. Thanks. What are you going to do? Keep on searching. I know these folks are friends of yours, but one of them's a killer. I gotta get to Jennifer before he does. My, you're a forceful one, aren't you? Look, I'm, uh, I'm terribly sorry about that, sir. I, uh, see, I, I thought you were going to scream. <laughs> Just because a handsome man came in my tent? Why, what makes you think I'd scream? <laughs> well, you're the one they're looking for, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, and then, uh, well, they're looking for me all over the place. I, I think I better get out of here before I get you in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Don't go. Don't go? Maybe I'd like to get into a lot of trouble. Hey, well, uh, well ma'am, may maybe sometime we could, uh, we could talk. <laughs> That's what they all say. Now, why don't you just relax and we can get acquainted? Well, ma'am, I, I, I just really don't think this is a, a time to get acquainted. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you earlier this evening with that girl. Now, I thought she was too young for you. I think you'd prefer a more sophisticated lady like me. Now, wouldn't you? Oh, ma'am, I... Can I come in, ma'am? Quick, behind the dresses. I'll protect you. And uh, after they've gone... Uh, you seen a young fella go by here doesn't belong to the carnival? No, I haven't seen anyone. Ma'am? They're gone, honey. Honey? Has anybody searched this wagon yet? Well, I'm sure the other party searched it thoroughly. They've searched here, Daisy, haven't they? Yes, they've searched very good. Well, I didn't see it. I think I'll take a look. Uh, Sheriff, if you don't mind, there are very few people that Daisy lets into a wagon. I'd rather somebody search it that she knows. You understand. Yeah, I think I understand. Colonel, why don't you take a look and satisfy the sheriff? Well, if that's what the sheriff wants. Look in there behind those clothes. Gurner. 
Turner, look in the back of the wagon. Nobody here, Sheriff. at all? Nope. It's like that little brother of mine disappeared as completely as that gal did. Now, Sheriff, you convinced she's not here? I'll decide that. As you wish. Just trying to cooperate. Uh, Sheriff, um, we got to start tearing down camp. We open in Placerville day after tomorrow. Isn't that right, Mr. Reed? Mm -hmm. We're going to find the guy that killed Della. There's coffee up in the cook tent. Why don't we all settle down for a bit? It's a good idea, Mr. Rodin. Right this way, Sheriff. I'd like to talk to you. What about? I think you know. I'm no more of a mind reader than you are. No, but you are a carnival man. A lot of people depend on you, Phil. Well, haven't I always come through for them? Yes. But will you come through for them now? You think I had something to do with that girl's disappearance, don't you? I think you could shed some light on it, yes. Well, you're wrong. If I am, I'll back you up. But if I'm right, I'll turn your people against you, Phil, and I can do it. Hercules, for one, has always hated you for the way you treated Della. Thanks for not sneaking up on me. You little galoot. What are you trying to do? I'm still trying to find Jennifer. She's around here someplace, Hoss. Della knew it. That's what she was trying to tell me when she was killed. Now, let's go over it again. Just how much was she able to tell you? Nothing. As though she wanted me to know, and yet she didn't want me to know. I don't know, maybe she was trying to, trying to protect someone. Of course. I should have known. Phil Reed. She would want to protect him. Mr. Rudin. If Phil Reed knows something about this that he ain't telling, I'll choke it out of him. Then you'd have the carnival people and the sheriff down on you. I know these people. they got a strange kind of loyalty. Yeah, I can believe that. I couldn't find out a thing from any of them. Hercules is the only one that, that might turn against Reed. You got any idea how you can convince him to help us? Well, not so long as he's with the others. Yeah, well, suppose we could get him away, someplace where we could talk to him. Yeah, but how are you figuring on doing that? I mean, he's pretty anxious to get his hands on me. Let's just let him know where I am. Yeah, wait a minute. Isn't that a little risky? Look, I'll chance it. What do you think, Mr. Rudin? Well, Reed is afraid of Hercules. Deathly afraid. And with reason. Might work. Yeah. Well, just in case it don't, I'm going to be around. Thanks. Look, I'll meet you outside of town. There's a grove of live oaks. Hoss knows the place. Right. Let's go. I thought you said there wouldn't be any trouble. There won't be. Cartwright! Cartwright! You might as well come out now. My mystic powers have told me where to find you, just as they let me read through a blindfold. Wait, Hercules, if my powers told me where to find him, they live. Let me read his mind. Hercules! Hercules! Come on! Come on! I got him in a hammer, Joe. 
hold him. Yeah. Hercules. Hercules, listen Hercules. to me. We don't want to hurt you, but we just want you to know that Joe didn't harm your Della. And if you go chasing after little Joe while the guilty one gets away, you're not showing any love for Della. You're letting her down. You say you love Della. You think you're the only man who loved somebody that didn't love him back. Listen, Hercules. Mr. Reed is the only one who really knows what happened to Della. He used to make Della cry. Remember, Hercules? We want Mr. Reed to tell us what he knows. Will you help us? I'll go with you. The sheriff has given up yet? He never did think we had the girl. Didn't I tell you it'd be easy? Oh, think of it, Phil. One million dollars. That's what that girl's gonna bring us. Mr. Reed. Garner. I think there's something you ought to know. I... You two know what's good for you. Keep it quiet. You made Miss Della cry, and you're going to pay for this. That ain't all you're going to do, Buster. You're going to tell us everything you know about that little girl that disappeared about Miss Della. I don't know a thing about it. Maybe you better ask him your way, then, Hercules. Stop him! Dad! Stop him! Hey, Dad! Dad! Hey, you know, Dad! Tell us, and I'll make him quit. It was Garner. Garner killed Della. I had nothing to do with it. You're a dirty liar. Get the sheriff. You liar. You're the one that killed Della. It was all Garnet's idea. He kidnapped the girl and then he killed Della. Because she was going to tell where the girl was hidden. Well, where is she, man? She's down at... Get it! Hey! Wait. The girl. Where is she? Where is she? Ask... Ask Daisy. Young fellow, where you been? You caused us enough trouble. Wait a minute, Sheriff. It was Gunner that killed the girl. He just killed Mr. Reed, and he got away, and Hercules is after him. Did you find out anything about Jennifer? Just before Mr. Reed died, he said, ask Daisy. That's the fat lady. Well, let's go. You'd better let me handle this. You keep the others back, or we'll never get anything out of her. You come with me, little Joe. Right. Daisy. I'm your friend, you know that, don't you? Mr. Reed said that you knew something about the girl that disappeared. Can you tell us anything? All right, Daisy. Thanks a lot. Daisy, Daisy, are you sure? Are you sure that you can't tell us anything about the girl? No, Daisy, no. You don't have to protect Mr. Reed anymore. Mr. Reed is dead. Do you understand, Daisy? Mr. Reed is dead. Mr. Reed? Dead? Oh. Now, Daisy. <laughs> oh, no. Daisy. You tied up till I get you home. Oh, no, Joe. That's all right, Joe. Okay, now. 
What are we going to do now, Mr. Rodin? We're going on just as usual. It's the only thing we can do. If you need anything, Mr. Rodin, you let us know. Well, thanks very much. But there's very little pleasure people like us have except the satisfaction of helping ourselves. Joe, don't you let that gal out of your side no more, you hear? <laughs> Little Joe, can you ever forgive me? Well... Yeah. Yeah, I think I can forgive you. Of course, it's going to take some time. Quite some time. <laughs> 